Let's talk about how do you balance your hormones and what does that mean? Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. I'm a fertility doctor and I get asked about balancing hormones every single day. And that's good. I'm glad people are asking because it represents a desire to understand our body. And that's what this channel exists for. So if you want to learn more about your body and your fertility, please subscribe and follow along. Now, unfortunately, when people talk about balancing their hormones, it often stems from a place with a lot of misinformation, and that is not your fault. The truth is we're often not taught about how our bodies work and what is normal. Therefore, it is hard to understand what is abnormal. And I'm going to be really honest here. I see patients come to me and their doctor, I mean, maybe it was a medical doctor, maybe it was an alternative medicine doctor, maybe it was somebody just called a hormone expert or specialist, has actually done things or prescribed things that has completely messed up their body or their ability to get pregnant. Because the truth is, your hormones are not balanced every single day. It is a menstrual cycle and the cycle changes and that is what is normal. And understanding that allows you to interpret lab values. And this is super confusing. So let's dive in to what is normal at the different time periods and then talk about what is abnormal because there are things that you can do and there are abnormalities that you should be aware of. Balancing your hormones. Okay. If your hormones are balanced, you have regular periods, regular monthly periods. Also disclaimer, none of this can apply if you are on birth control pills. The birth control pill is a combination of ethanol estradiol and a progestin, and it stops the brain from sending out FSH. It is supplementing you with hormones. It has benefits. It has side effects. It can be a really nice contraceptive option. It can be used for medical treatment for a variety of things. But regardless, you can't balance your hormones on the pill, so just stop watching if that is you, okay? But if you are talking about your periods off of hormones and trying to understand if they're balanced, if you have regular cycles that are regular and predictable, they're, they're probably balanced. Somebody might tell you differently based on a random blood draw, but this is why you need to know what is normal. So at the start of the month, I want you to imagine that a group of eggs comes out of the vault inside the ovary and each of these eggs grows inside a small follicle. This is important because the eggs are microscopic and the follicles are a fluid filled structure that each can be seen on ultrasound. The number of follicles you have does correlate with how many eggs you have remaining. So if you have more eggs, you have more come out every month. And if you have fewer eggs, you have fewer come out every month. That is called ovarian reserve, and that can be tested with an ultrasound count or a blood test called AMH. And I do have ent entire videos on AMH. So what happens is this group of follicles, when they come out of the vault, they should all make a little bit of estrogen. This type of estrogen is called estradiol. Other things make estrogen in our body too. A good example is fat cells. Now fat cells make a slightly different type of estrogen called estrone. And sometimes we see people checking them as if they're equal. But estrogen levels in general talk to the brain to tell the brain if a follicle is growing. So a little bit of estrogen is not enough to have a follicle growing. So the brain then sends out FSH or follicle stimulating hormone, which is a well-named hormone. FSH works to stimulate one follicle to grow. This is how we're starting to ovulate. If I check your blood work and the first few days while you're on your period, your FSH should be on the lowish side, usually between five to 10, and your estrogen should typically be around 20 to 30. If you have PCOS or you have hypothalamic amenorrhea, this is going to be different. But in general, things are just starting to gear up. Then as we progress into the follicular phase, this is the first half of the cycle from day one of your period until you ovulate adequately named the follicular phase because this is when a follicle is growing and the predominant hormone from the brain is FSH or follicle stimulating hormone. FSH gets that follicle to grow. As that follicle grows, it makes estradiol. Estradiol gets the lining of the uterus to thicken up. It also causes you to be mentally really sharp, to feel really good, to have high energy levels, to feel like you're in the mood to get pregnant. So the female brain loves having this high estrogen time. Progesterone is low. There's none, no progesterone. So if somebody checks blood work in the follicular phase and they tell me they're estrogen dominant, I'm gonna say, fantastic. You're, 
supposed to be estrogen dominant in the follicular phase. This is why it's called the follicular phase. And this is why this is the time for gains, working out hard, getting things done off your to-do list, and really scheduling those important things if you're trying to sync your cycle. You should not have progesterone. And so one big thing I see is people will come in and add progesterone or progesterone-like compounds or give people Vitex to take every day. And this is just wrong, wrong. Okay, so if you're not ovulating and you have PCOS, I'm going to circle back to this, but just remember in a normal, natural, perfect cycle, there's no progesterone for half of it. When that follicle gets to maturity, the brain has no idea it's from a mature follicle, but it senses that very high estrogen level for 50 hours and then it sends out an LH surge. This is ovulation follicle ruptures, it comes out, and now that follicle reforms into the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum is this fatty, blood-rich cyst. It came from the follicle, and it is so important because it responds by making progesterone in pulses in response to the brain. So the brain sends out LH pulses, therefore having up and down of progesterone levels. And we know Progesterone can range from 3 to 40 nanograms at any moment in the luteal phase, depending on what's happening in relation to the brain surge. So the luteal phase is now the time from ovulation into the next period. And so this is when you have a corpus luteum and when you're making progesterone. This is the time when you have progesterone. Progesterone is the progestational hormone. Now your body is getting ready for a pregnancy, and so you're starting to be hungrier, it increases your hunger. You might bloat a little bit more. You're going to feel a little bit less energetic and fatigued. Your body wants you to take it easy so that you can support a potential implantation. If you get pregnant, the pregnancy comes in and latches on and makes HCG, and that's the pregnancy hormone you can check on a pregnancy test. HCG rescues the corpus luteum, and what that means is that corpus luteum only lives for about two weeks. After that, it is going to die unless there's a pregnancy. If there's a pregnancy, that HCG is now going to cause a constant release of progesterone. And your progesterone levels will then go from up and down. And then once HCG is present, it will constantly rise. And so we see that shift once you have an implantation. If you're not pregnant, the corpus luteum is going to die. Your progesterone is going to fall. And now you're going to have a period. And so if you're going to lean into the luteal phase by sinking your cycle, you're going to be kinder to yourself. You're going to have less intense activities. You're going to nourish your food with lots of nutrients. And you're going to try to stay away from like the salty things that are going to blow you even more, but then the cycle will continue. A big thing when it comes to hormone balancing is people who have irregular cycles and they have PCOS. In PCOS, you have lots of small follicles, a lot of eggs coming out of the vault. Each of those follicles makes estrogen again, so you're resting estrogen levels a little bit higher. This causes the brain to send out a little bit of an FSH level less than it might because it thinks maybe an egg is growing. When estrogen is high, FSH is going to be lower because, oh, there's an egg growing. And when estrogen's low, FSH should be higher because we need an egg. The brain is just trying to get your body to release an egg in synchrony. So if you have a resting elevated estrogen level, then your brain's not going to send out quite as strong of an FSH signal. But the FSH signal that it does send is going to get dispersed amongst all of these follicles. And it's not going to be a strong enough signal to get any one of them to ovulate meaning you're not going to get to the point where you're going to ovulate and you're going to make progesterone and have a regular cycle. That's part of the problem with PCOS. However, if somebody draws random blood, they might say, oh, your estrogen's 40 and your progesterone's zero and you have an estrogen dominance. That's not a real thing, okay? You just have an extended follicular phase because of the PCOS. That's because you're not ovulating. That's the problem, right? Giving you progesterone or giving you a progesterone-like compound is not going to make you ovulate. And so what we need to do is really get to the root of the problem and either lower your resting estrogen so your brain will kick in. You can do this by weight loss, right? Fat cells make estrogen. So weight loss can help this. So can certain things to try to naturally help your PCOS. And this is where eating lots of plant-based foods comes in, getting good and regular sleep to decrease your inflammation levels, avoiding like sugar and processed foods, and getting moderate exercise every day can sometimes help balancing this. But also, often it needs ovulation induction medications like letrozole or Clomid, which allow the brain to send out more FSH and therefore ovulate. If you have PCOS, the ovaries are not making those high estrogen levels that they want to, and therefore the ovary gets really bored. 
the ovary is a hormone making factory. And when it can't make estrogen, it gets bored and it starts to make testosterone. And this testosterone from the ovary starts to cause increase in you know, hair production, acne, central weight gain, and overall adds to this feeling of not feeling great. And it becomes a pattern because then you have weight gain and then you're resting estrogens a little higher and then you're not ovulating. Giving somebody progesterone for PCOS has its purposes. Number one, to protect the endometrium. If you're never having a period and those cells are sitting there, they have a risk for developing endometrial cancer, which is one of the worst things that can happen for PCOS. So taking progesterone will cause the endometrium to then bleed when you're done, right? Because it's mimicking the luteal phase and then allowing you to bleed. That progesterone is not gonna come in and allow you to ovulate for most people, meaning it is helping you not have a bad outcome, but it's not helping you get pregnant. Now, if you're not trying to get pregnant, you can have beyond daily progesterone, and that's fine. It's gonna prevent endometrial cancer. It might make you feel kind of like more normal if you don't like cyclic progesterone, but that's not normal either. It's not helping you ovulate, and it is not helping you get pregnant, and in fact, it is birth control. That is the mini pill. Maybe it's not you know, a combined birth control and it's some fancy compounded version, but taking daily progesterone is preventing the lining of the uterus from allowing an implantation. Or taking scheduled progesterone is unlikely to allow this. And I will see all the time somebody's taking progesterone days one through 10, they're trying to get pregnant and they're shocked at why they haven't because their cycles are regular. We're just having a regular bleed. You're not ovulating. You're not getting to the root of the problem. So I'd be very wary when people just check random hormones. Hormones like FSH, LH, estrogen, and progesterone have different times in the cycle when they should be checked. Estrogen, FSH, and LH should be checked in the very beginning of the cycle, usually from days two to four. Progesterone should only be checked about a week after ovulation. We know there's none in the follicular phase. Again, if you're drawing random hormones because you're not having a period, that is best going to be combined with an ultrasound so somebody can see what is happening and use the lab values. And that might be your doctor or that might not, but I would ask about that. Ultimately, I know there's so much confusing information about hormones and I am here to help. Ask questions in the bottom so that we can do a hormone Q&A coming up. I have a lot of good hormone information if you're trying to get pregnant in my Enhance Your Natural Fertility course, which you can follow the link in the comments to go to and learn more about your body in depth with monthly calls and lots of support. As always, you can follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD, or you can listen to the As a Woman podcast for more information. Thanks, friends.